the method method we have used here is the thymidine radioactive thymidine incorporation method and this thymidine goes into the cells and binds to the dna and we know that if the cell starts dividing into two cells then the dna is the first thing which the nucleus they divided into two the genetic material so uh, it is very sensitive a cells when it starts dividing it can pick the uh, pick uh, from the dividing cells also so we have used this method and then uh, the 50000 cells were grown for 24 hours in these plates here 35 mm plates and then uh, in the last 4 hours i added there the thymidine which was 0 0.4 micro ci per ml and then the radioactive uh, thymidine was added here and then after completion of 24 hours then the medium was aspirated so here i'm aspirating the medium which contains the thymidine so here for the waste because it is radioactive and before also for the migration assay as in the beginning of the lab session we discussed that we wear gloves and we uh, follow the all the good uh, laboratory practice guidelines so here the waste is also carefully done because it is a radioactivity and then the next step was that the 5% trichloroacetic acid so we have uh, we have to incubate the cells now with 5% tca and the reason is uh, to make the cells permeabilized so and then we incubated uh, them for 10 hour or 10 minutes All right, so after 10 minutes, then the next step was to add there, we have aspirated the TCA, and then now I have added there the sodium hydroxide. So in each well, then we will pipe the sodium hydroxide, and then it is a 750 microliters and we have to wait another 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes now, 600 microliter of each sample is uh, transferred into these uh, white capped scintillation tubes, which are labeled already. So every sample was transferred in the, in the, in the scintillation tubes respectively. And after that, we have added the 3 ml optiphase high phase 3 scintillation liquid into each, each vial. So first we have our sample there, the cells and the cerebral fertilized, and then the, all the extract is in the, in, the, in the scintillation vial. And here we are adding the optiphase scintillation liquid, which will help them to be measured. And then uh, the most important thing is you have to mix uh, very well uh, by vortexing. So here I'm adding the three milliliters of the scintillation count, uh, the scintillation liquid in each in each tube. So the next step was to uh, measure the radioactivity, and here uh, we use the one four one four liquid scintillation counter bulk, and the scintillation count it gives is per minute that how many scintillations uh, uh, were counted per minute. So that will be our reading. So this machine was used for that recording. So first we take the tray and uh, in the right order, you have to put the, put the samples. And then uh, we start the machine and then we, we get, the, get the readings, which we can see on the, on the left, -hand, left hand side panel. So then we recorded the reading, which were the scintillation counts per minute. And then we combined all the data, all the uh, six uh, students have done and I have done in triplicate. And then all the data was combined and we did the normalization of the data. And then we used again the graph bed uh, prism eight. And then uh, we, we applied the t-test and this result was also very significant. So we concluded that the blocking calcium entry into the uh, ML1 thyroid cancer cells attenuates proliferation.